Um, the way that I remember these trigonometric identity or these identities is we have secant of theta minus um, or pi halves minus theta. Remember, I think of these cofunction identities as like transformational functions. You know that secant, well, you, if you guys can like visualize the six trigonometric graphs, sine and cosine look fairly similar to each other, tangent and cotangent look fairly similar to each other, and cosecant and secant look fairly similar to each other. So if I'm going to apply transformations to secant, the only graph that I could uh, obtain would be the cosecant graph. Right? Now, actually, before I even get to that, though, first of all, I forgot to do this. Again, you know, make sure, guys, if you see the pro we're trying to solve, right? We're trying to find the values of theta that, make, that makes this equation true. So you could multiply things, but I don't think that really makes your life that much easier. But that's not mathematically technically wrong. Um, you know, you could distribute it. But you know, as we've kind of looked at, if you already have it as a product equal to 0, typically the best thing to do now would just be to apply the zero product property. So we'd have secant of pi halves minus theta equal to 0, and cosecant of negative theta minus 1 equals 0. And again, what I was talking about, secant is applied transformation is, going, is the same thing as cosecant of theta equals 0. Now remember, um, the, well, let's get to the next one. This is the cosecant of a negative angle, bless you, bless you. Um, so therefore, we can use our even and odd identities. And we recognize that the cosecant, or the trigon, the cosecant, the cosecant, the sine, the tangent, the cotangent of a negative angle is always the negative of the negative function of that positive angle. Right? The only one where it does not matter if you're taking the function of a negative angle is cosine and secant, because those are even. So let's go ahead and solve this. If I add 1 here and then divide by negative 1, I'd get cosecant of theta equals negative 1. All right, so we have the cosecant for both of these now. Now again, remember, how is cosecant related? Because basically what we're asking is, when is cosecant equal to 0? on the unit circle, right? That's basically what we're asking. But sometimes, guys, using cosecant in the unit circle can be confusing. So what I would do is represent this as sine. This is really 0 over 1 and negative 1 over 0. So if I want to think about this in terms of its reciprocal function, which is sine, then that would be 1 over 0 and 1 over negative 1, which is still negative 1. Now here, we have an undefined value. So is that going to be a solution? Yeah. No. So we can just kind of like not really worry about it anymore. The only value we're looking for, oops, root of theta, is for what angle does sine of theta equal negative 1? So we go to our nice little lovely unit circle. And we say negative 1's down here. So the angle would be 3 pi over 2. Well, first of all, I asked you to find the angles between 0 and 2 pi. So the angle between 0 and 2 pi here is going to be theta equals 3 pi over 2. You don't want to do negative pi halves because that's not within the restrictions of 0 and 2 pi. Now, if I ask you to find all the solutions, like the easy way to like think about this, which I didn't explain to you guys last class period, was think about like how often does the graph, how often do these solutions repeat? How often does sine equal negative 1? Like think about the graph, guys. Look at the graph. Right? How often does sine equal negative 1? How far apart are those points? How often does sine repeat? No. What is the period of sine with no, tra with no internal transformations? 2 pi. The graph repeats every 2 pi. Right? In the positive as well as the negative direction. And again, that makes sense on the unit circle. If you add or subtract 2 pi, you're always going to come back to the same solution. right? You don't want to add pi to it. That's not, that doesn't give you a solution. You don't add pi halves or anything else. So to find all the solutions, it'd be theta equals 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, because there's infinite number of um, revolutions that we could add to get a solution. OK? Yes, no, maybe so. Why do you go from cosecant to 